this is Lars from SSW TV. I'm here with uh, John Papa at the very, very pretty Grand America Hotel in Salt Lake City for the Pluralsight Authors Conference, or Summit as they call it. Um, thanks for taking time, John. To uh, I know you have a very, very busy schedule, so we feel lucky having you on here. Um, I wanted to talk to you about community. It's something that's really close to my heart. I organise an event in Melbourne called DDD Melbourne. Uh, once a year with about 350 people, all community. Um, so it's, it's community focused, it's run by volunteers, uh, and it's a way that I try and give something back to the community. But what, what does community mean to you? Well, I guess let me, let me turn around and ask you a question. Sure. So you do a lot for the community, and it's obviously given you something, and in return you want to give back to that. What is it that you got out of the community that caused you to want to give back? Well, initially I wanted to spread the word. I wanted to talk, I wanted to present. And user groups gave me that opportunity. First, it was small, 10, 20, 30 people. Try, your, you know, try out, what do I know? Can I present? Can, are people interested in what I'm saying? And then the DDD event, again, gives, it, anyone can submit and present. Um, and it's voted on by the public. So it's really a stepping stone to present to a larger audience. Um, so I got that, and I wanted to give everybody else that same opportunity if they were in for it. So the opportunity to both contribute to the community and to speak and to share knowledge and to meet other people. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we all really want out of the community events. And I hear this a lot of, John, how do I get involved? How do I uh, speak more? Uh, I'd really like to get into some of the larger conferences. What's the first steps to doing that? And the answer is different for everybody. but. What I look at first is you just have to take those first steps. Mm. You know, whether it's a user group, that's one way of going, or meetups, as they're calling them now yes. these days, yeah. uh, I think based on the website. Yeah. Uh, doing something like that, or code camps, which have been popular in the last 10 years or so, where people get together and have like a 300 to 1,000 person gathering on a Saturday for free. Yeah. Uh, the element there is free. So going to events that are free, where maybe there's you know, $5 for a pizza or whatever, yeah. Yeah. something where you can go and engage with other people, it's not the topic. It's not the technology that you're learning. It's the connections you make with people. It's the humans. Mm -hmm. The reason that we do this is not to code. It's the value we get out of interacting with people who code. So if you want to get that, if you want to get that uh, joy and excitement of reaching out to other people and uh, have the fun of pair programming with somebody, uh, which if you haven't done, it's fantastic. You've got to try it. It's awesome. Uh, those are the kind of things you can get out of these community events, code camps, um, or even just grabbing some of your buddies on a Skype call in the middle of the night or a Google Hangout. Yeah. yeah. I haven't done the Skype call. I may fear I would be killed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a good idea. I mean, and, and you've got a good point. You, it's up to you what you contribute with. Mm -hmm. There's lots of opportunities of joining and, and participating as an audience. But if you want to give something back, it's, you know, really the sky's the limit. Um, and you said free, and I think that's a good point. Community events, some, some events I've seen have been branded community, but in fact, in, in essence, they weren't. They were you know, put on by some company that had an agenda to pushing something, but they were free. But they weren't because they, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? You, right. There was something other than the community that was you know, a and focus of it. okay. I mean, businesses have to make money, right? I mean, yeah. you work for a company, I work for a company, and they have to make money at the end of the day. So sometimes those events are good too. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have a little bit of a filter to look at sometimes <laughs> what's happening there. But I think it's, again, the important part is what do you want to get out of it? And it's cool to just go and attend, but when you attend, talk to people. Go walk around, ask questions, ask the speaker, ask the colleagues who are there. Uh, bring your laptop, you know, code while you're there. Write something, show somebody an example. Yeah. Uh, you only get out of something what you put into it. Absolutely. By being a passive observer, observer's fine, but a passive observer means you're just sitting there, mouth quiet, not talking. You're not gonna get as much out of it as if you come and you actually start engaging with people. Uh, even if it's simply you're not comfortable talking with people there, maybe you wanna email them later, mm -hmm. get their email address, I mean, you know, get their text number. Uh, the more network connections you make, the more powerful you become as a developer yeah. because you now have more people you can reach out to. And it could be something as simple as saying hi to the guy next to you. Absolutely. Like, we don't all have to talk to John Papa, right? It doesn't matter. It's, you know, pick the brain of the guy next to you or the girl next to you and figure out what makes them tick. And you don't know. There might just be a connection and, you know, you get something valuable out of the discussion. And you'll find that, it, somebody here said it yesterday, I can't remember who it was, maybe I should protect the names even if I did, but <laughs> it was really funny, uh, but it was true. It's, you go to these conferences, these events like this, or code camps, and 
Somebody you talk to and meet for the first time, within like 30 seconds, they're telling you all the TMI. Way too much information about themselves. Yeah. But I think something about our personality as developers, sometimes we're introverts, but yeah. then you meet somebody, and once that wall's broken down, yeah. Yeah. information comes flooding out. And while it may be TMI, I think a lot of times it's really good tips and techniques. And uh, The other one I mentioned, which I've really found a lot of value out of over the last couple of years, is pairing. And because of things like Google Hangouts and Skype and some of the other tools, we get a couple of us online with video and share screens, and then we code together. And you do it for two or three hours, and it's amazing what you can get out of this. Um, people who don't do it, you're missing out. I mean, you're so missing out. You've got to try this because you heard it from John Papa, you've got to do pair programming. two brains together, and I'm doing a play-by-play -play later today with Ward Bell, the two of us get together and we solve things faster than if we both individually had gone separately. Um, it's it's really good, and it doesn't have to be, you know, super top notch guy and, and you know beginner, or it doesn't have to be both top notch. It could be any grouping. It could be two beginners together. Yeah, I completely agree. Not only do you become more efficient, but I think the output is much better, much higher quality than if you were doing it on your own. Yeah, and I think the last aspect I would talk about is the marketing side of yourself. Yeah. As a developer, you have to decide, is the reason you want to get into community to help the community back? Is it to learn for yourself? And it could be not just exclusively one of those, uh, but another side of that is to brand yourself, to get your own name out there more, whether it's for searching for a job, uh, don't tell your company, or it's for just meeting more people, or you, you just want to speak more. You want to speak at larger conferences, and to get into some of those, you have to be a little more widely known. Yeah. Uh, so learning how to market yourself as you do things is important. And uh, John Sonnez, a speaker here, yes. uh, some great content on how to do that. And look at people who've done that. Some of them don't organically, some of them have tried um, and done it very um, intentfully. But the things I've noticed a lot are, you know, make sure every time you do something, your name's on it. You know, even little things like Twitter. Okay. Having a Twitter name of Cute Pony 2 might be cute. But who knows that's Lars, yeah. you know? How did you know that was me? Ah, you know. Uh. The pink dress on your dog is your icon. Just... <laughs> But those things, it sounds funny, but having your face and your name on things, people recognize you. Yeah. And that helps you get your stuff out there. Absolutely. Having a blog with your name on the top. Mm -hmm. You could call your blog what you want, but have your name on it. Yeah. Uh, Google will crawl that for you. you know? <laughs> it sounds like stupid, simple things, and they are. But if you do this, these things add up over time. Yeah. And doing sessions at code camps and reaching outside of your region, doing webcasts with LinkedIn user mm -hmm. groups and um, with you guys, yeah. doing interviews like this. Yeah. Uh, the more you do, it's, it's, like a, it's the, the water effect, you know, the, all the little drops of water in the pond make those ripples. Uh, you may not see that reward today, but you'll see it at some point. Yeah, there were two things I was going to mention there. One is that, you know, this is not going to happen overnight. Nope. Like, Very overnight success, success takes years. And, and I think that's an important point. You can't do 10 of these or 20 of these and they say, well, no one still doesn't you know, contact me about speaker presentation op opportunities or anything like that. It takes time and you gotta be persistent. Um, I think that's a valuable thing to know that, that I mean, I'm, I'm building up as a, as a brand with my name doing various things like this, but I don't have the clout that say, uh, John Papa that's been doing it for 20 years has, or well, how long are you doing doing it, John? You got it. <laughs> Get right on it. <laughs> wow, since you were five. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> um, the other side is like, what do you get? Okay, so I'm a, a student of psychology and psychiatrics, you know, because okay. I'm crazy. But <laughs> one of the things that I uh, like to think about is what is it, how do I motivate somebody? So what is it I can do for that person so I get what I want? Mm -hmm. For example, let's say you want to speak at TechEd or Google I.O. or something. Yep. What's going to make them choose you? You know, your name is one thing, but what is it you've done to get their attention? Uh, for example, going out and creating a new open source library and then promoting it. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to do it these mm. days. Open up a GitHub repo, put your code up there. Too many times I hear a developer say, I wrote something wicked cool and he shows it, and people are like, well, where can I get it? Well, it's not ready yet. <laughs> Why? It's open source, put it up there, let them try it and give feedback and see what happens. Are you finding that enterprises are picking up on community created content more, more and more? Because I have a, a theory that it used to be that, no, we've got to do it internally and we're going to have our wiki of things we want to do. I've worked in a company like that. And they may steal bits rather than saying, oh, there's a, you know, a globally recognized standard or internationally or nationally, whatever it might be. Let's just use that. Yeah, a common thing used to be to fork a repo out there and then make your own brand of it. So it was the not made here syndrome. 
Uh, I'm seeing more enterprises lean away from that now, mm -hmm. and there's legal concerns too. But they're leaning away from that partially because the problem that that behavior uh, engenders, and that's if you fork someone's repo, let's say you take Angular and you fork it because sure. you wanted a new feature, great. You should have gone ahead and made a PR right, on Angular. But instead, you say, ah, we'll do it for our own stuff and make our own with our Lars company, mm -hmm. Angular. Now, you've gone down that road, and now next month, Angular 1.x comes out. How do you merge that functionality in with your stuff now? Well, you probably don't. Exactly. And now, three years down the road, you're way off on another trail, and it's not even Angular anymore. It's, it's Largular. <laughs> so, you know, it's, Which would be cool, but be cool. Let's, let's not go there. <laughs> So it's, it's important to do that, and I think a lot of the companies are realizing they can leverage what's going on in the open source community. Uh, I've had people use some of my open source stuff in community uh, enterprises, and uh, it's, again, another way to get your name known uh, where you're going. And it's definitely, you know, to me that's just a very positive move in the whole industry that enterprise is now picking up on what the community is already doing. Yes. So by being part of your community and you are sharing your your work or your code or your features, whatever you've done, uh, means that you will potentially get noticed by enterprises and it can lead to much more than just community, although that was maybe not your intention. So uh, it all links together, you know, in some way, and I think, you know, I don't know to me that's kind of cool. Well, for me, it all comes down to why am I doing something. Every time I do something, I ask what's the value in it. Uh, it might be something simple as I could spend an hour coding or I could spend it with my kids, mm -hmm. right? You've got to make choices. And the real reason I made the choice to get involved with communities, I enjoy engaging with people. I personally get a lot out of talking with other people, yeah. and I really love doing it. It's not the conferences and being picked for this or that. It's, no. it's about the engagement you get, and I've met some amazing lifelong friends from it. So you've got to figure out what is for you that's motivating you, and if you can't figure it out, then maybe it's not for you, but yeah. only do what, what motivates you. Yeah, it's got to be enjoyable, right? Exactly. All right, thanks, John. I appreciate your time at the, at the summit here. I know you've got many other things you have to do tonight and tomorrow. So thanks for your time. We'll see you later. Sure thing. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.